time to rapidly decentralize Australia. Decentralization is a subject Australians like to talk about but really have shown little interest in achieving. It is one of the most overused words in politics today. The reason for this curious situation is, I believe, that when all is said and done, decentralization involves decisions on government spending. Most people can readily assess the costs of decentralization. They are less able to assess its benefits. This general rule is given added force when we realize that, in the Australian context, decentralization policies will necessarily involve a far more dynamic and forceful role on the part of the Commonwealth government. A basic issue which has to be faced in all thinking about decentralization is that the development of unplanned urban complexes around major Australian cities has been a function of virtually uncontrolled decisions by private businessmen. These businessmen, in making their decisions about the locations of factories and the development of housing and shopping, have recognized that, from their point of view, this is the cheapest form of development of markets and people. In the process, these private decisions have involved the whole community and costs, which have not been counted as part of the cost of the developments themselves. These social costs of unplanned private development do not figure in the cost of calculations of the private businessmen, who have been largely responsible for the growth and development of our suburbs. Although the social costs have not been counted, they are nevertheless costs which have to be borne by the community as a whole. If private businessmen had been obliged to recompense someone for the cost of suburban sprawl in high transport costs, if they had been obliged to pay for the provision of adequate parklands, if they had been obliged to pay for the losses on public transport facilities, which have resulted from the need to move people around this complex, if they had had to defray these costs, then suburban development might have been entirely different. If they had been obliged to defray these costs, which have resulted from their actions and decisions, they might have themselves decided that it would have paid them to take their land, factory and housing developments right away from the suburbs to new towns. Decentralization only seems to be so very much more costly than the development of the existing urban complex because the social costs do not enter into any direct calculations of profit and loss for the private businessmen. The costs nevertheless are incurred, and one of the tasks of planning for decentralization to recognize the importance of these hidden high costs of unplanned urban development. We have to try to wrench our minds out of their well-worn tracks, and recognize that the market is just not equipped to measure all the costs involved. Decentralization is the beginning of the process of cutting down on the vast social costs of the urban sprawl. Obviously, if these costs are to be reduced, it will be necessary to make really sizable regional city and associated units. Only the Commonwealth government is in a position to draw up a plan to achieve this. Only in this way will we be able to reap the advantages of avoiding the huge costs of unregulated urban sprawl, while avoiding the other also important direct costs which any businessman can measure, of working in a city which is too small to be economical. Dispersed development has failed. Only concentrated and deliberate regional development can succeed. Comment, create regional special economic zones, RSEZ, with favorable tax incentives and eliminate existing and future urban heat sinks that destroy lives and communities by creating and mandating parks, tree-lined streets. Minimum eaves for and spacing between complexes, comma, e.g., Whitlam on Australia's Constitution, Wides Code 1977 pp. 101-103.